Good afternoon. Good morning. Good evening. Uh, behold, I am doing a new thing. Number one, you can see what I'm holding. You can read properly. Um, everything makes sense now. <laughs> uh, yeah, I want to thank um, Kathy Ream. And if she pops on later, if she's not on already, let her know. She uh, helped me figure out the, um, the trick to uh, camera flip. Yes, Christine. So all glory and praise <laughs> to Kathy, who sent me a video on YouTube uh, that showed me how to flip it. And it was just as easy as that. So that's new. The camera's new. I pulled my hair back today. That's new. This is weird because I'm like looking at myself and everything is kind of like off. So if I'm a little wonky today, hi Judy, uh, you'll understand why. Uh, so yeah, so everything's a little new. Uh, the hair's new. I just pulled it back. That's all. No haircut. I'm not cutting it for any time, anytime soon. So. I got my uh, my coffee today, my pure roast, low acid, organic coffee, um, and some stuff I can show you today. Oh, I got this shirt from a friend. You know who you are. Um, it's lovely. I love it. It's so comfortable. Um, and you can read it. It says faith. Because you got to have a faith, a faith, a faith. Oh, the other new thing is uh, I decided to plug in my little um, iPhone lavalier microphone. So, um, yeah, let me know if this is, uh, okay, there you go. That was my question. Shelly says, audio gray too. So this is like a professional kind of microphone that I've plugged into my phone. And it just dawned on me. I'm like, why didn't I do this two weeks ago? You know, um, I'm a slow learner. God sort of just rolls things out day by day. So <laughs> thank you for, um, for bearing with me through all of this. Uh, my goal is to set up my really good microphone. I've got a really good um, microphone, vocal microphone, that I use for all my um, voiceover auditions <coughs> from home. Because that's really all I can do at this point is audition from home. Um, and the only auditions I've had are for voiceover. So while all the TV shows are shut down and movies are shut down, um, that's all I could do. So please, God, let there be more of those. Um, so yeah, let me just have my turn on that off. So yeah, it might be a little weird seeing me on the other side, but uh, this is how it's supposed to look. I'm still figuring out the mechanic because everything I do is like opposite in the camera. It's weird. Anyway, uh, yeah, letting the beard grow for now. I might trim it here and there. It's like it's so weird looking at the turning my head one way and then seeing it go the other way on the screen. So strange. Anyway, I'll get over it. Um, one of my priests, he's uh, letting his beard grow. He, he's always clean shaven. Oh, I just touched the mic, which means it'll be, sorry. Um, uh, so he's growing his beard out when he's normally clean shaven um, in honor of the homeless. So I got a head start. So I'm just going to keep growing it. And uh, yes, for all those who have asked me, hi, Jenny. Um, hi, Kirsten. Hi, uh, Janet. Thank you for all your uh, lovely words. Um, I... Uh, the Bible apps, narrating the Bible. I actually, funny thing, years ago in New York, um, I recorded a couple of, a number of books from the Tanakh, from the uh, first five books of the Bible. The first five books? No, it's a Torah. I should know this. Again, I'm not a scholar. I recorded books out of the Tanakh um, for a uh, Jewish company. I used to work for the Jewish Braille Institute uh, in New York City. And I would record 
uh, well, my, my, I, first of all, I was, I was the, the voice recordings on all of their um, phone messages. So whenever they would be closed for a Jewish holiday, you would get my voice on their phone bank. But then I also recorded uh, for a, a brand new um, audio, um, I think it was a CD at the time, because this was a while ago. So they did brand new CDs. Uh, they hadn't updated their um, company in a while, uh, their uh, recordings in like 30 years. And so I got to read the book of uh, Samuel, I think, the first book of Samuel. I read uh, the books of Kings. Hi, George. Hi, Ev. Um, I read uh, Leviticus. Uh, if you ever want to really dig into the nooks and crannies of the Jewish law, Leviticus is pretty hardcore. Uh, and they've got things that uh, can be kind of scary sounding, but I know they had, um, you know, the law was given to the people at the time when they needed that law. Just like Christ's laws of love one another, just as I have loved you, and um, love your enemies, just as those laws were instituted when he came around, because that's what the people of God needed to hear when he turned up. So the laws are sort of given to us at the times when we need them most, um, the, the, you know, spiritual law. So, um, hi, Tammy. Welcome. Uh, hi, Francesco. Hi, Joel. Not Jolie. I read that I called you Jolie instead of Joel, so I'll hopefully correct that. <laughs> hi, Rhonda. Um, couple of uh, little things here. So um, I had the, the honor yesterday. Hi, Trudy. Oh, the Netherlands, it's late over there. And uh, I had the honor of meeting with a priest yesterday and getting these things blessed, including my, again, it's opposite. Um, no, Dean, I didn't change my wall. I actually flipped the camera image around. Figured out how to do that thanks to Kathy Ream. So I've got all these uh, kind of blessed by a priest. Uh, and some of you had mentioned salt, getting some blessed salt. Um, uh, using prayers that are used in uh, exorcisms. So uh, this stuff's pretty powerful now. Uh, not that it wasn't already, but it's a little extra, you know, kick for evils, but, you know, a little kick in the pants. So, um, yeah, it was really interesting. So he, he said all these very, these special blessings yesterday um, over the salt. He blessed the salt, he blessed the water, and then he took the salt and he put it in the water, which I thought was really interesting. I'd never seen that before. So... Son of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Why not? Oh, before we started praying, though, I wanted to show you guys this. Hello, Georgia. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I forget now that the yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna reference it for like the entire show today, I'm sure, but. I wanted to show you guys something that was very... Judy, thank you. Yes, the 24 books. Okay, perfect. 24 books of the ten, in the Tanakh. So there were like 15 readers. If you look up uh, my name and I think Tanakh and uh, audio recording and Jewish Braille Institute, uh, you'll find links to, I think, that version of the Tanakh where you can hear me narrating those books. Oh, and I was saying, uh, yeah, you version Bible, all the Bible apps. I, I can't just like, I don't just, those are, when they get people to read those, um, they usually have auditions and they hire people or unless you know somebody that's connected. Um, and uh, uh, basically they, they have you come in and do sessions and then you record stuff. So I can't just sort of call them up, be like, hey guys, can I 
read your Bible permanently and have that be the voice, and you know, it's uh, it'd be nice, but um, but uh, unfortunately, I, I can't just pick which Bible I want to be the voice of. Um, they figure that out and they audition people. Um, but there has been talks about some stuff like that, um, hopefully coming up within, I don't know, in the next 12 months. Um, but I want to show you guys a prop that we use uh, at the, in the last days, the Passion Play that we'll be showing this year uh, that we were in rehearsals for, that we're going to be showing on Palm Sunday and Holy Thursday. And, uh, and that'll be at uh, 12 noon uh, Pacific, uh, 3 o'clock Eastern, both days, um, with my co-director, uh, Maria Vargo. And one of the things that we use in the Passion Play, because we really try to get as authentic as possible and really bring the live audience into the experience of Christ's passion and death and, and everything that he went through. Um, and we start with some teaching in the temple, and then we go to... The Last Supper, and then we take it all the way through the crucifixion and the burial. And so, um, being that we live here in Los Angeles, we've got all sorts of amazing access to props and set pieces and things that you couldn't find anywhere else. Um, so one of the things I found were these thorn reeds that were bendable and flexible, that I guess florists would use for decorating stuff. Well, I got a hold of these last year and made my own crown. Look at that. Isn't that awesome? And then you'll see it looks so real. And then you'll see the, the blood from when we painted it. And you'll get to see all of that this year in the play. So, yeah, it's about this big. And then, okay, so the blood's on this side, so that means it would go like this. I won't put it on now because it would pull my hair apart. Um, there's wires in there, and, and this isn't, even though, like, this is plastic and it's, like, got flexible material that moves, you know, um, uh, this is not comfortable to wear. And especially when you have this on and then you've got a cross pressed against you, and I'm falling with the cross, falling to the ground, and then when it's time to take it off, uh, it's not easy. But it's, uh, it's not the real one. So actually, hang on one second. Yes, Joan, the, um, what is purported to be the actual Christ's actual crown of thorns is in Notre Dame in France. And it's probably the size of what I'm about to show you now. So this is an actual crown of thorns. This was given to me by um, a nun friend of mine, Sister Rose Bacotti. When uh, she's famous, she does movie reviews. She's awesome. Um, and she was in Israel, and there was a shop where they sell these. And uh, she's like, I don't know why. There were so many there. Nobody was buying them. I'm like, well, <laughs> I mean, what are you going to do with them? Uh, you can't quite wear them. You can hang them up. Um, but these, this is real. At one point uh, for the play, yeah, that'll pull my hair even more. Uh, at one point for the play, I thought about hollowing out the inside and having, you know, 
real thorns on the outside. See, it is very sad, Sandy. Uh, yeah, I, I have a feeling. I mean, they, you know, if they were freshly cut, they, they wouldn't break. They would literally just dig right into your scalp, and I'm sure they were not precious when they crowned Jesus with this thing. Um, but I thought about trying to cut out the middle and then leaving the actual thorns on, but because I, I get pretty beat up in the show, uh, I just felt that it might be dangerous, and um, I don't want to take a chance on losing an eye, because I've had stuff happen during the show before, and a couple of times I've, I've bled like on my knee, because I f fall when we were performing the show, the, um, the meditation, really. Um, outdoors, uh, I was doing Jesus's falls on concrete, but it was okay. It's okay. You know, sometimes you just got to take your pain, where, whatever you're going through and just offer it up. Um, because there's nothing more than that God loves is when you take all of the trials that you're dealing with in your life. And you just honor him with them, right? Because we're all, none of us escape pain and suffering on some level in this life, in this world. For me, the, the point of it all is how do we manage our relationship with God during the trials? Because he's allowed trials, you know. If he allowed his own son, the greatest trials of all, you know, what does that say about what we should be realistically expectant in our own lives? Um, some people suffer more than others. And I think if you're one of those people that are suffering, chances are if you're here watching this, you already do this. But it's a reminder for me that if when I do get, I do, when I do find myself in those periods and trials of suffering and great suffering, whether mentally or, or, or physically, now what I'm doing is I'm offering every bit of it up to, to God. And eventually it stops. It doesn't, it doesn't last forever for me. It stops. But for as long as it lasts, it feels like uh, a lifetime, right? When you're in pain, it feels like it's never going to end. But it will end. And when you offer that pain and that suffering up to him, he'll take that and he'll transform that and he'll use that to refresh you. It may not feel like it right away, but he will use it to refresh you and to give you strength, and he sees it. And he's like, ah, okay, I got that one. Oh, oh, that happened to you, yeah. Oh, you're offering it up, awesome. It's my own little mental image, it's like, God sees our trials, and when we come to him during those trials, I've found that as I've really, really committed it to him, He's, he's, he's stepped in more than I noticed ever before. Yeah, so I don't have much more to say about that, but that just um, came to mind. Um, so, yeah. There was one thing that came in today. that um, I wanted to uh, bring in to our prayer because it's super relevant. And uh, there are these two folks, many of you probably who, who watch this probably know them, John Paul and Annie. They're this couple 
that email out novenas to people. And for my Protestant and non-denominational brothers and sisters out there that, that haven't heard me talk about that, a novena is simply a nine-day prayer. Uh, you don't have to be a Catholic to say it. Uh, it's, it's, I think Catholics like the structure of a nine-day prayer because it's like, okay, I'm carving out this amount of time for this specific intention that I really want to focus my prayer energy on. And I'm going to offer up what I'm going through for a set period of time. And just like we ask God for, uh, we pray to God, uh, just like we ask people to pray for us, um, novenas can utilize um, various saints to ask to intercede to God for us as well as uh, extra powerful helpers. It's like, uh, yes, we can pray directly to God too. Um, sure, absolutely, and we should every moment of the day. Um, but the lives that saints have lived and a lot of them that uh, were martyred, uh, we feel, uh, you know, there there was a certain holiness to their lives that, uh, that it can't hurt to have somebody like that on our team praying extra for us. So these folks... Um, I have a website called PrayMoreNovenas.com. PrayMoreNovenas.com. And, uh, and today, uh, they just finished one yesterday for the coronavirus. And uh, Dana, that's awesome. Um, and I got your last message. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reach out to you. Uh, they have, they're, they're redoing this... Uh, novena for the coronavirus and it doesn't take long it's it's really quick and so for the next nine days i'm going to incorporate this into our prayer here because why not we're all going through this it's more defense for us it's more protection it's an opportunity for us to pray as a community here of believers fellow believers um like i said non-denominationally. You don't have to subscribe to a, a specific theology to, to say any prayers. I, For the times that I've prayed with my evangelical brothers and sisters and, um, you know, nobody nobody checked my card at the door, you know, to see, are you you all right to be, should you be saying these prayers? I don't know. You're, you're Catholic, aren't you? I don't think you should be, um, maybe you should hold off for a minute. Okay, just, just wait for a few minutes, and then we'll, we'll say some stuff that you can say. But you, you can't say, no, it doesn't work like that. Anybody can pray. Anybody can pray these prayers. So I'm going to pray them. Um, if you want to follow along, uh, you can go to Pray More Novenas, P-R-A-Y-M-O-R-E, N-O-V-E. Let's see if it'll show it. No, it won't do it. Uh, pray More, N-O-V-E-N-A-S dot com. You can subscribe, and they've got new ones every nine days so um yeah let's get started in the father and son of the holy spirit amen uh and this is just their little setup for this novena thank you for joining us and praying this novena we are reminded during times like these that we are all united in prayer that jesus is with us and that we are never alone and you are never alone Throughout this novena, we will pray for those who are sick and suffering from the coronavirus, for those working in the medical profession, for those who have died, and for their grieving family members. We will also pray for those who are being affected financially because of the coronavirus, such as those who are losing or have lost their jobs. We will, um, and then when you get the emails, you're let, you can share your prayer intentions. If you want someone or something to be prayed for, you can, you can click a button and then send it to them. Today we will pray for all those who are vul vulnerable and at risk of getting sick. Thank you, uh, Sister Barbara. Okay. So day one, the coronavirus novena. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
Father in heaven, have mercy on us and on the whole world. We come to you today with our fears and concerns. You know what's in our hearts. We love you, trust you, we need you. We ask you to be with us, stay with us, help us through these times of uncertainty and sorrow. We know you are the divine physician, the healer of all, and so we ask that you bring your loving and healing presence to all those who are sick and suffering right now. Please comfort them. Please be with the grieving families of those who have passed away. Please have mercy on those who have died. May they be with you in heaven. Please stand at the side of all medical professionals who are putting themselves at risk while they work to bring healing to others. Lord, we are scared and we are sorrowful. Please heal us. Send us your peace and overwhelming presence. And now you can all mention your own intentions here. We ask the 14 holy helpers, those who lived during the time of the plague, to pray for us and all who are at risk. Jesus, we thirst for you. You chose to enter this world as a vulnerable baby. Be with the most vulnerable now. Help us to continue to return to you with our whole hearts throughout this ordeal. Amen. Oh, I think I can share this on Facebook. I'm going to do that too, so you all can um, can just get access right to it. Isn't that lovely? Isn't that a beautiful prayer? Some of these Catholics... They kind of know how to pray too, huh? <laughs> I tell you. Um, 3.33. Well, it's, it's a good time to transition. And any of you, brothers and sisters of mine out there, whatever your denomination, share your, your favorite prayers here. Post them. Um, when I can, I like to read stuff at night and, um, you know, comments and, and, and prayers. So, yeah, just this is, let this be a, a resource, a hub for people, you know, um, so that we just collectively come together. Let's come together. That's what God wants. He wants us to be united in prayer. And then today's lectionary readings, Monday. <clears throat> so today's first reading is from the book of Daniel. Daniel. <laughs> If Daniel and Samuel had a baby, they might call it Daniel. God, give me the ability to communicate clearly. Please, Jesus, sweet baby Jesus, give me the ability <laughs> to just get the words out of my mouth clearly. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Um... Yeah, so I don't think, I haven't seen Dale on. Dale usually posts these readings so everybody can follow along. Um, maybe I missed them. I can't see everything that's going on. But anyway, so this is from the daily readings from 
the lectionary used by the church. And the first reading is from the book of Daniel. That's chapter 13, verses 1 through 9, 15 to 17, 19 to 30, and 33 to 62. Thank you, Sherry. In Babylon, there lived a man named Joachim, who married a very beautiful and God-fearing woman, Susanna, the daughter of Hilkiah. Her pious parents had trained their daughter according to the law of Moses. Joachim was very rich. He had a garden near his house, and the Jews had recourse to him often because he was the most respected of them all. Again, this is chapter 13. That year, two elders of the people were appointed judges, of whom the Lord said, Wickedness has come out of Babylon, from the elders who were to govern the people as judges. These men, to whom all brought their cases, frequented the house of Joachim. When the people left at noon, Susanna used to enter her husband's garden for a walk. When the old men saw her enter every day for her walk, they began to lust for her. They suppressed their consciences. They would not allow their eyes to look to heaven and did not keep in mind just judgments. One day, while they were waiting for the right moment, she entered the garden as usual, with two maids only. She decided to bathe, for the weather was warm. Nobody else was there except the two elders, who had hidden themselves and were watching her. Bring me oil and soap, she said to the maids, and shut the garden doors while I bathe. As soon as the maids left, the two old men got up and hurried to her. Look, they said, the garden doors are shut and no one can see us. Give in to our desire and lie with us. If you refuse, we will testify against you that you dismissed your maids because a young man was here with you. I am completely trapped, Susanna groaned. If I yield, it will be my death. If I refuse, I cannot escape your power. Yet it is better for me to fall into your power without guilt than to sin before the Lord. Then Susanna shrieked, and the old men also shouted at her as one of them ran to open the garden doors. When the people in the house heard the cries from the garden, they rushed in by the side gate to see what had happened to her. At the accusations by the old men, the servants very much felt very much ashamed, for never had any such thing been said about Susanna. When the people came to her husband, Joachim, the next day, the two wicked elders also came, fully determined to put Susanna to death. Before all the people, they ordered, Send for Susanna, the daughter of Hilkiah, the wife of Joachim. When she was sent for, she came with her parents, children, and all her relatives. All her relatives and the onlookers were weeping. In the midst of the people, the two elders rose up and laid their hands on her head. Through tears, she looked up to heaven, for she trusted in the Lord wholeheartedly. The elders made this accusation. As we were walking in the garden alone, this woman entered with two girls and shut the doors of the garden, dismissing the girls. A young man who was hidden there came and lay with her. When we, in a corner of the garden, saw this crime. We ran toward them. We saw them lying together. 
But the man we could not hold because he was stronger than we. He opened the doors and ran off. And we seized her and asked who the young man was, but she refused to tell us. We testify to this. The assembly believed them, since they were elders and judges of the people, and they condemned her to death. But Susanna cried aloud, O eternal God, you know what is hidden and are aware of all things before they come to be. You know that they have testified falsely against me. Here I am, about to die, though I have done none of the things with which these wicked men have charged me. The Lord heard her prayer. As she was being led to execution, God stirred up the Holy Spirit of a young boy named Daniel, and he cried aloud, I will have no part in the death of this woman. All the people turned and asked him, What is this you are saying? He stood in their midst and continued, Are you such fools, O children of Israel, to condemn a woman of Israel without examination and without clear evidence? Return to court, for they have testified falsely against her. Then all the people returned in haste. To Daniel the elders said, Come, sit with us and inform us, since God has given you the prestige of old age. But he replied, Separate these two far from each other, that I may examine them. After they were separated from one another, he called one of them and said, How you have grown evil with age. Now have your past sins come to term, passing unjust sentences, condemning the innocent, and freeing the guilty. Although the Lord says, The innocent and the just you shall not put to death. Now then, if you were a witness, Tell me under what tree you saw them together. Under a mastic tree, he answered. Daniel replied, Your fine lie has cost you your head, for the angel of God shall receive the sentence from him and split you in two. Putting him to one side, he ordered the other one to be brought. Daniel said to him, Offspring of Canaan, not of Judah, beauty has seduced you, lust has subverted your conscience. This is how you acted with the daughters of Israel, and in their fear they yielded to you. But a daughter of Judah did not tolerate your wickedness. Now then, tell me under what tree you surprised them together. Under an oak, he said. Daniel replied, Your fine lie has cost you also your head, for the angel of God waits with a sword to cut you in two so as to make an end of you both. The whole assembly cried aloud, Blessing God who saves those who hope in him. They rose up against the two elders, for by their own words Daniel had convicted them of perjury. According to the law of Moses, they inflicted on them the penalty they had plotted to impose on their neighbor. They put them to death. Thus was innocent blood spared that day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's responsorial psalm is Psalm 23. The response 
is even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures he gives me repose. Besides restful waters he leads me. He refreshes my soul. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. With your rod and your staff, that give me courage. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. The verse, the verse before the gospel is from Ezekiel chapter 33, verse 11. I take no pleasure in the death of the wicked man, says the Lord, but rather in his conversion that he may live. Today's Gospels from the book of John. So if you have your Bible, you can turn to John chapter 8, verses 1 through 11. A reading from the Gospel according to John. All right, you. Jesus went to the Mount of Olives, but early in the morning, he arrived again in the, in the temple area, and all the people started coming to him. And he sat down and taught them. Then the scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery and made her stand in the middle. They said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery. Now in the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. So what do you say? They said this to test him, so that they could have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and began to write on the ground with his finger. But when they continued asking him, he straightened up and said to them, Let the one who among you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. Again he bent down and wrote on the ground. And in response, they went away one by one beginning with the elders. So he was left alone with the woman before him. Then Jesus straightened up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She replied, No one, sir. And Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. 
go. And from now on, do not sin anymore. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Amy, for posting. Hey, Liv. So what I love about the structure of the lectionary is they, they give you a parallel scripture readings from the Old Testament and the New Testament and really draw the distinction and the parallels, the very strong, strong connection between the law of Moses and the law of Christ. That's also one of my favorite episodes from Jesus of Nazareth. And uh, Franco Zeffirelli, who directed that miniseries, literally shot it just as, as it was read. It's quite beautiful. Jesus is just sitting there drawing. He has him, he has Robert Powell sitting on the ground the whole time, just kind of doodling. And if I remember correctly, he, he doodles a sign of a fish. Of that, you know, that just those two lines. Right here, this way. It's still backwards. This, and then where it's just like, just two lines. These overlapping arcs. So yeah, that was lovely. Oh, somebody said that my vocals are going in and out. Is that true? Anybody else get that? Thank you, Lenny. I'm happy to do it. I'm honored to do it. You guys just want to let me know. You can hear me okay. And there's not so much snap, crackle, and pop at the moment. <coughs> Okay, thanks, Diane. Thanks, Lori. <coughs> thanks, Tina. Yeah, uh, also, you know, guys, as, as well, sometimes there are um, internet connections. Everybody's got an in, a different internet connection. Um, could be my connection that pops out. I'm actually uh, in the process of ordering... Um, new internet service to get a, a much faster solid connection hey Jenny, thanks for joining um, thanks Dana, thanks Linda thanks Joelle so yeah, so uh, this whole uh, this whole experience has uh, really given me food for thought about uh, budding ministry in a different form one that I'd never I don't know it started as a something God put on my heart to do but um, yeah well, maybe I do that it's going to get crackly for a second be a little better. <clears throat> okay, okay. Well, maybe I should also turn this down. Yeah, okay. Now is where we come to the part part of the... Ah, it's not on that side today. Well, it is for me. It's on this side. You can read it. Jesus, I trust in you. The Divine Mercy Novena, very quickly, before the hour shifts... Uh, I want to connect us in the chaplet during this hour, holy hour, the hour that Christ died on the cross. Uh, the Divine Mercy Chaplet is uh, a series of prayers to God the Father on behalf of the suffering that Jesus, His Son, endured. And um, it is meant to stress and remind us as children of God the infinite 
and unending love and mercy and compassion that Christ has for all humanity, all humanity. Anyone can say these prayers and anyone will benefit from saying these prayers. So, um, for those who tend to duck out because they feel like it's repetitive or boring, use this as an opportunity to focus on Christ's passion and what he did to accomplish salvation for all of us uh, and know that this goes by pretty quick. There's five decades, decades or decades. Um, and we're going to do it. So here we go. The Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You expired, O Jesus, that the source of life gushed forth for souls and the ocean of mercy opened up for the whole world. O fount of life, unfathomable divine mercy, envelop the whole world and empty yourself out upon us. O blood and water which gushed forth from the heart of Jesus is a fountain of mercy for us. I trust in you. O blood and water which gushed forth from the heart of Jesus is a fountain of mercy for us. I trust in you. O blood and water which gushed forth from the heart of Jesus is a fountain of mercy for us. I trust in you. Father, we offer these, these prayers, this chaplet up for all those suffering from the coronavirus, all those affected in any conceivable way. Father God, we thank you for your consistency, your love, your generosity, your promises for your compassion, for your mercy, for the gift of your Son. Hear our prayers and all our intentions as we offer them up during this time of prayer in Jesus' name. And hear us as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace. Uh, I have someone who started going into a rosary. Um, I believe in God, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father, the Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, He was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of a Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again into heaven. On the third day, He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father, the Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. Amen. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. 
Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. <coughs> For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement of our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Eternal Father, I forgot. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. <clears throat> For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us. And on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One, 
have mercy on us and on the whole world. Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Mortal One, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Eternal God, in whom mercy is endless and the treasury of compassion inexhaustible, look kindly upon us and increase your mercy in us, so that in difficult moments we may not despair nor become despondent, but with great confidence submit ourselves to your holy will, which is love and mercy itself. Amen. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. Divine mercy, we trust in you. Saint Faustina, pray for us. Saint John Paul II, pray for us. Blessed Father Michael Sapochka, pray for us. Saint Benedict, pray for us. Saint Michael the Archangel, pray for us. All you holy angels and saints, pray for us. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl through the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners. Now and at the hour of our death, to Our Lady of Lourdes. If anybody wants to screenshot, you can have it. I'll try to post it as well. O Holy Virgin, in the midst of your days of glory, do not forget the sorrows of this earth Cast a merciful glance upon those who are suffering, struggling against difficulties, with their lips constantly pressed against life's bitter cup. Have pity on those who love each other and are separated. Have pity on our rebellious hearts. Have pity on our weak faith. Have pity on those we love. Have pity on those who weep on those who pray, on those who fear. Grant hope and peace to all. Amen. Amen. Thank you, friends. It occurred to me that I had a bit more trouble focusing <clears throat> last Monday as well. It's when I don't get a lot of sleep. 
the night before that usually I'm much more prone to uh, distraction or just mental cloudiness. And uh, I've been struggling lately with getting to bed early. I know many of you can identify with that. And I know there's a thing that keeps me occupied into the wee hours of the night. And that causes for later sleep, later night, less sleep. And then as a result, distraction during my prayer time. So I could say that that struggle to go to bed early stems from something that has a deeper desire to distract me the next day during my very uh, precious hour with you of praying. So pray for me that I can break that habit again starting to come out of it last week and then I'm sucked back sucked back into bad habits coffee helps but uh, it's more it's a little more deep rooted than that so today I want to get to bed early so I can be crystal clear and lucid tomorrow but we said it anyway we said our prayers anyway and nothing's going to stop that. Nope. I'm probably going to go past 30 days. Well, I know I am. So, especially with this intention for the coronavirus. So, thank you, friends. Thank you for being here. Um... Uh, did you all watch the Chosen uh, live stream last night? Thank you all for your prayers. God bless you all. Um, it's pretty cool. And getting to see Liz talk about her experiences, it was, it was wonderful. It was lovely and beautiful to see so many people um, tuning in together. And I pray that it only grows over the next eight days, uh, seven more nights, here we come, um, yeah, and I can't wait to get to see you all myself in that same, uh, portion of the hour of the show, um, a week from yesterday, uh, Sunday night, this coming Sunday night, um, and I love seeing, you know, Dallas still get choked up after that last scene in episode one, Still gets me, you know. I've I've talked with Liz at length about it, and uh, it's just uh, it's just extraordinary and super powerful, and such uh, evidence of God's Holy Spirit working through the arts, working through uh, those of us who have been blessed to be a part of this, and Dallas and his writers who had this put on. Dallas's heart and then shared with writers who so beautifully navigate these stories and then the technicians and the um, lovely brothers, Harmon brothers, Neil and Jeff and all the guys at uh, VidAngel who worked so hard to put this into the hands of the world. I mean, when you think about, when you think about uh, (laughs) what actually has transpired in the course of a year. The Chosen hasn't even been out for a year. Remember, it first debuted, first four episodes debuted last Easter. Last Easter. First four. It's not even a year for a grassroots project to reach so many people and to do so much good in the world and to reach so many hearts and 
convert so many people to Christ. Um, yeah, I have a very, I'm on a mission to get very select people of influence to um, see this and to know what, what it's doing in the world, um, especially people in uh, religious circles, you know, because, you know, those shepherds who see to such large flocks, when they get on board and when they're stirred by the Spirit and they feel the Spirit working through this, this project, just like you go and you, if you've ever been to Italy in the Sistine Chapel, I was there when I was a kid. I was traveling throughout Europe and I went to so many beautiful churches and the artwork in Europe specifically in the Sistine Chapel is like like the inspiration that the Holy Spirit has given to mankind to allow people portals into the Divine Master and all that he has done in his 33 short years on life in, of life and throughout the last several thousand years through God the Father, through the Jewish people, has just been nothing short of uh, uh, remarkable. So um, this is the 21st century version of our attempts at inspiring people in the same way. So, so thank you. So I don't want to talk more than I need to. Um, I'm going to go eat something. Thank you all for being here. Share, um, share this with your friends and those who, who need prayer. Um, you never know, even if they're not, you know, no matter their denomination, or if you're a Catholic and you're like, well, I don't want to send it to my Protestant friends. They might think I'm trying to convert them. Well, take that responsibility off of you. That's not your responsibility, and that's not even your ability. You don't have that ability. I don't have that ability. People don't have that ability. Only God has the ability to convert the heart. All we can do is just open the door. It's up to God to allow them to walk through it, right? So take that responsibility or that... Uh, That uh, I want to call it a chip off your shoulder. It's not a chip. Well, I'll just offer it as, as as prayer. Hey, there's a guy here who prays, and he prays different prayers, and a lot of them, one group of people recognize, and other groups don't. But that doesn't make it any less uh, potent for the person that needs to hear them. If you feel in your gut that somebody in particular could use listening to this for or watching this for an hour, send it to them. You don't know why that feeling comes upon you. For me, I believe it's the Holy Spirit. Same like the Holy Spirit told me to do this every day. I never did this in my life. I never thought I'd ever want to do this. I never thought I could do this. I never thought I would anybody let anybody in from the public see into my apartment. <laughs> Granted, it's a very <laughs> small frame, but uh, the thought of that previously, I would never ever have thought that I would be in any remote way comfortable doing this, especially as a professional actor on my professional page. So clearly, it's not my doing. Where is it? I still don't know. The My hand goes this way, and on the screen it goes the other way. It's his doing here. He's doing all of this. So, yes, be bold. Be bold. Don't be pushy. Be bold. Nobody likes somebody being pushy. That's the other thing. That's like, I get turned off to pushy, and I'll, I'll just say this, and then I'll let you go. Don't be arrogant. Be bold with humility. Be bold with humility. Okay? Just merely offer 
the prayer. This is what I would do. Hey, if you want to pray with me or if you can use some time just to disconnect from the news, here's a little thing that I saw on Facebook. You know, I do that with other religious folks that I uh, follow. Like, hey, I saw this great thing. This prayer really spoke to me. I thought something inside me said I should send this to you. And leave it at that. Don't, don't tr try to go proselytizing or beating people over the head with the Bible. Nobody wants that. I don't want that. Nobody's ever done that for me, and it's worked. It doesn't work. Or, or using fear. That's the other thing that gets... I'm not starting to get a little fired up here. Um, using fear to convert, to proselytize. I don't think he'd approve. It's just my feeling. That never works. Love. Use love. Use love to, f to, to proselytize. Use, use love to open the door to Christ. Because that's what he's charted us to do, right? So, be bold with humility. Okay. Jonathan signing off. God bless you. Take care. Good night. Uh, good morning. Have a great day if you're just getting started. Uh, thank you for all of you who, who come on here and pray with me and to offer prayers and to uh, uh, put the text up while I'm saying those prayers because I think a lot of people can, uh, it's less abstract and it seems less tedious maybe. Not that it seems tedious to me, but maybe some people could just find, trying to find it. They come in and they're just like, what's going on? And they're confused. They don't know where to jump in. So, so thank you, folks. Um, for everything. Um, sending you love and prayers. God bless you. Take care. And uh, see you tomorrow, 3 o'clock Pacific, uh, wherever you find me. Um, and then maybe I'll, I'll see some of you uh, tonight for episode two of The Chosen. Um, yeah, all right. God bless. Bye.